Good morning and thank you for joining us. We are proud to present Matt Hathaway with Rapid7. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm here to talk about the human side of security, a lot less of the tech technology, more about all the different things that IT and security need to do together. Um, sorry, not about vanilla ice. Um, moving on. Um, so what we've started to see, and at Rapid7, we have seen this, heard this a lot from our customers, is that as we introduce cloud environments and development environments and, and modern infrastructure and make life easier for end users, it's increasing the complexity on the IT team, on the security team, and that's creating more and more friction between those orgs. Um, it's not enough to say, hey, we have some servers, let's secure those, that's where the data is. Um, there needs to be a lot more communication, coordination, there's a lot of challenges in, in making sure that people are on the same page in both IT and security, and this introduces a lot of questions. And so, really breaking it down to, to four questions, we hear a lot and we focus on trying to help our customers with, am I vulnerable? So if somebody were to try and attack my organization, how would they be able to do that? Is it, would it be easy? What would they focus on? Where would they have success? Am I compromised? Is somebody already on my network? Um, these questions are not easy to answer. It's what IT and security generally, you know, they're not gold in the same way. They're not working together all the time to truly say, are we compromised? Has somebody gotten access to our network? Do they have our data already? And then the last piece is, am I optimized? And this, a lot of people think of this more on this IT side, making sure the team can be efficient, team can keep things up and running and, and respond quickly, but it matters a lot in security as well. And then the last piece really is, am I innovating? So your company can't succeed if you're not being innovative. We all know that today. So what can I do, what can our team do to make sure the organization can innovate, but also I can find new ways to solve our problems, answer these questions. So I want to talk about some keys to more effective collaboration. There's a, again, this is the human side. It's not simply you put tools in people's hands and they start working together great. Uh, IT and security have different goals in mind. They use different terms. They, they, they just behave differently. So it can't be as simple as, okay, guys, just work together. You have to put a lot more behind it. Um, and so the first thing to think about here is really words matter. If you say endpoint to an IT team, they're probably thinking about where the data is being sent and the cloud environment. What, they, what the security team means is my laptop, my desktop. These, these terms aren't interchangeable. Make sure you're using the term and people are on the same page. The same thing with don't send, here's a security, here's a vulnerability over to a developer. You need to say, well, here's a security bug. Because bugs are understandable, they're not a big deal, they can get fit into the next sprint, they can be resolved. It's a lot less scary than we have a vulnerability and that means nothing to most developers. So words matter. Make sure that when you talk to people in a different department that they they know what you're talking about, that you're on the same page. You're not, you're not talking past one another because then you're never going to be able to really work together. Um, the next big piece is orchestration. Everybody talks about automation and the scary side, but it's not scary. There's so many things that humans need to do. The more you can leverage a machine to do that task, that menial activity, the everyday thing, talking to somebody on Slack, asking if they want this action to take place, sending data from one system to another. All of this, whether it's scripting, whether it's more advanced tools, orchestration and, of course, automation, but orchestration is the bottom layer of making sure you don't have to log into 15 different screens just to take action and do something with your life. You want to be able to be effective Make sure you have a strategy for your job, for the organization, for security and IT as a whole. When, when can you design a system to do this task? When can it be simpler to trigger an action from another action? All of this is, is helpful. It can help IT and security. Security doesn't have to simply pull in an, 
somebody in the IT team, if you've laid out an instant response plan or something to say when the following events occur, this action will happen and you get approval across security and IT, that can be really effective to make sure both your goals are being met, you're not interrupting somebody in the middle of a day for a menial task. Instead, it can just be, this is our process, this is the way we do it when it happens, trigger that, it's okay, nobody's gonna be upset. And then lastly, really transparency is, is huge. Let the other team see what kind of analytics you have, what you're seeing in the data, what are you, what are you looking at, why do you think this is concerning? Is this, you know, you can't just send an anomaly over the wall and say this, is, this, this activity looks concerning to IT because they don't know what that means. Tell them this is why it's concerning. Show them what a typical day looks like or a typical activity. If, if somebody suddenly sends a large file out the, off the network, that doesn't mean anything to anybody unless you explain here's what that file was, here's what they normally do, and it's nothing like this. That kind of transparency of sharing, this is what our goal is, this is what our concern is, and here's why, this is how it's different from the norm, is a lot more important than simply sending an email. Um, being able to get somebody involved and make them aware of what you're trying to accomplish and why you're concerned can really help. And this is the same thing with engineers, product managers, things like that, where you can't just make a decision and say, this is the decision. Just sharing why people get bought in, they start to feel like they understand, you're not just interrupting their day for no reason, you have a, a, a real reason to, to be concerned or a reason that this action should take place. Another big, uh, big thing to consider to improve this collaboration, combat a lot of this complexity that's been introduced between IT and security, um, is improving the visibility. This transparency is bigger than just visibility, um, but I want to talk through a use case quickly, um, and a, a lot of what our customers have done here and what we've done for them is really looking at it from various angles. Use research to your advantage. Use broader insight across many, many companies and the entire internet. So a good example here is the Heisenberg project. So what Rapid7, what we've done is we've set up honeypots across the internet in very, very different places and make them look like real machines. Some will look like a Windows server, some will look like um, they may be running code on them that, that would be a production server and open to the World Wide Web, whatever we can do to really invite that activity, see what's being broadcasted. What are attackers doing? Um, what are they doing to your network specifically? What's coming from your organization? Being able to map that back, we really work with our customers to say, okay, it looks strange, but some, some of the servers on your, uh, on, on your, your uh, domains are sending some malicious activity to other customers. They're showing up in our threat feeds so let's, let's work through and figure out what happened. Are you, have you been compromised? Is there something you can do to take action right now? So this also helps our customers understand why we're building detections in a certain way. What are, what are um, attackers actually doing? It teaches us, it teaches our customers, and, and this is a lot of that kind of shared visibility of what why are you concerned about this? What's normal? And being able to see it in that very large scale and see things coming, uh, it can really help uh, your organization. Project Sonar is a different angle, is saying, is, it's not that am I compromised, is this org compromised, how would com somebody compromise, but more along the lines of am I vulnerable? So Sonar, Project Sonar is a project that Rapid7 scans the entire internet multiple times a day, and this really answers a lot more of what are common vulnerabilities in the marketplace? What are frequently used services? What, is, you know, what are legacy services that you wouldn't expect to be online anymore? Um, what we do is we release an annual report called the uh, National Exposure Index, and this tells you which countries have the largest footprint of various very vulnerable uh, services, whether it's old school FTP servers, or, or, or something else you'd be shocked is even out there, trying to map that to different countries just to share, this is concerning, try and get people to take action and, and kind of close those very open uh, exposures that they have to these, to these attackers. And so this is something else that you can use to say, 
for our organization, what do we have exposed to, to the internet? What, what can anybody see if they really want to, if they go to our domains, go to our IP addresses? It can help close that out, get, immediately secure your organization for free. These are available online to anybody um, if you go to scans.io. Um, so it, it can really, we highly suggest it. It's, it. It can be really interesting. A lot of our customers get great information. It's free to anybody to be able to look through that. And the last piece is threat intel and attacker modeling. So of course, threat intel has been a, a popular word for a lot of years. It's not simply domains and IPs. It's not as simple as, hey, block this IP address. It has to be a lot more of what kind of attacker group uses these various behaviors, what are their tools, what, what are, what's my organization most likely going to be compromised by? Like, am I, would we worry about a nation state if we're a small business? Of course not. What, knowing and modeling what kind of attacker is likely to go after your business, what they're likely to try and get, can really help feed that um, detection angle and the threat intel that you should care about instead of spending tons of money on various feeds that are email lists of, of of CSV files, knowing that sort of thing, using our, our team of security researchers, we do this for our, our customers, for our managed services, but also um, provide this and share this with other threat intel organizations because that's really the only way to get that insight across the board. What's impacting the financial industry? What's impacting technology industry right now? Knowing that can help your org prepare for the inevitable incident does it have to be big? No. If you're prepared and you're, and you're keeping track of how you're vulnerable, how you're likely to be compromised, and answering those questions, it can make sure that your organization can respond quickly and prevent a breach from becoming a, a big deal, something that needs to be newsworthy. So with that, thanks everybody for coming to the talk. Just want to remind everyone how important it is to, in summary. The, I, the people side of IT and security to keep your organization secure, to keep the business running, making sure your org can innovate and continue to, to grow. Remember the people side is more important than the technology often.